Live from Chicago, Illinois, it's the Othi Schwering Show. Featuring tonight's special guest, winner of the NBC Stand Up for Diversity Showcase, Patik Srivastava. And from Master Chef Season 5 and Honey Baby Bakery, Elise Mayfield. And now, please welcome your host, a man who wasn't born in a manger, just raised in a barn, Othalamu Schwering! Hey! Everybody, welcome to the Othi Show. How we doing? Good. How was everybody's Thanksgiving? It was pretty nice. Pretty good, pretty nice. I had a pretty sexy Thanksgiving. Yeah. I got open mouth kissed right below the belt buckle. <laughs> of course, it was a theme party, so the belt buckle was on my pilgrim hat. <laughs> but we were saying the Pledge of Allegiance, so the hat was on my lower stomach. I just got a really sexy raspberry is what I'm trying to say. Not a lot of UTIs on Black Friday. Because of the cranberry stuff? Yeah. <laughs> um, rough year to be a turkey. Rough year for turkeys this year. Um, there was a recent poll where they asked Americans what their favorite Thanksgiving bird was. Um, turkey came in second. Second place. First place? The early bird sale. Uh. Consumers. Leftovers are always nice though, right? Yeah. On Black Friday, you know, hectic day the day before, family, all kinds of cacophony, and then you get to have, you know, put on your pajamas, have some hot chocolate, relax, and then immediately go to the store and buy whatever big screen TV's left, you know? <laughs> Which everyone's left over. Consumers. <laughs> um, it can be tense being around family, you know. I hope anybody can, can you guys attest to this? Like it's, it can be rough sometimes. Um, a 68-year-old um, Salt Lake City, Utah man was arrested for holding a rifle to his 17-year-old daughter's head oh. yesterday. Yeah. But in his defense, she was wearing all black, all black pajamas and has like really anti-American sentiments. So he thought she was Viet Cong. <laughs> so, give the old man a break, you know? <laughs> you guys follow politics at all? Yeah. 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 Um, Justice um, Ruth Bader Gins Ginsburg? Ginsley? Yeah. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Ginsley. Ginsburg, OT. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, was released from the hospital after heart surgery. So now we know at least one, um, one Chief Justice has a heart, right? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Seems like, seems like 2014 was just yesterday, right? Um, a woman, in, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a woman in Mesa, Arizona, I only do this once a month, it's hard to get warmed up again, okay? Um, a woman in Mesa, Arizona is freaking out because she thinks she accidentally gave away her wedding ring um, while she was giving out Halloween candy last month. So she's like, you know, looking for it pretty feverishly. I think we have a photo of the ring. It's, it's right there. <laughs> that ain't coming back. Not at all. And finally, um, the world's first test tube penguin was just born. Aww. Aww. At the San Diego, at the San Diego, San Diego? San Diego SeaWorld. Uh, first, you know, first test tube penguin. She immediately looked up at the um, elderly black man um, narrating her life and said, why did you do Dolphin Tail 2? <laughs> why? We have a great show. We're going to get started right now. Come on. Hey, Jim. Hello, Mr. Othi. How are you doing today? Seasons greetings. How are you? Oh, I'm feeling good, man. I am, I'm not at work, so I'm a happy man. How was your holiday? Oh, I, it was spent having a, a turkey sandwich while walking a dog over by the Magnificent Mile. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I know. Not very exciting. That was, but pretty, that was pretty terrific. I guess it beats the alternative. Which is? Getting shot on the Magnificent Mile. Oh, yeah. Breaking news. You guys hear this? Um, there was two people shot in the cosmetics department of the Nordstrom's downtown tonight. Yeah, That's so... breaking Chicago news. So really, folks, the, the Black Friday stuff, not worth it, really. Stay home. Be, be sane, please. Um, 
I had a pretty sexy Thanksgiving. I think I mentioned that. Yes, you did, Othi. I, I wouldn't expect anything less from you, Ob, anyway. <laughs> pretty sexy Thanksgiving, pretty lonely, um, lonely Christmas. <laughs> Wait, wait, what's what's going on there? I don't know. Premonitions? Okay. Um, now, Jim, up funny. top we're going to do um, what's become probably the most popular segment on the O.P. Schwering Show. Oh, what of, one, of the, one of the ones that we can write the most jokes for, yes. Yeah, um, <laughs> we're going to do what the kids call Almost Called. Now, this time it's a TV edition. Um, usually what we'll do is we'll look at some pipe, like favorite or popular movie or pop culture phenomenon. And, you know, all these things are branded in a certain way, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're named something for recognition or for the hashtag or whatever. But um, we're going to see what, you know, some early processes might have, what they might have been called or named yes. or um, what, what, what the working title was. Exactly. So this is um, almost called the television edition. And if you notice very, if you look very closely, you can actually see Othi and one of our previous guests, C.J. Taladano, in that little TV there. Man Crash Monday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like we're on the TV show right now. Okay. So first up, we have um, not not my cup of tea, but The Big Bang Theory, very popular show. Popular, yes, popular. The, the Big Bang Theory was almost called Nerds with Friends. Oh yes. So it was almost called. Um, then we have Two and a Half Men. Yes. The original iteration, not the one with Ashton. No. Two and a Half Men was almost called Two and a Half Plot Lines. <laughs> All right. Well, what, uh, what else we got here? Then we have this next one, one of my, my wife and I's favorite films, films, movies. See? I'm <laughs> film. Get, get out of it, Othi. Um, not the marriage, but like that mindset of saying stuff wrong. Um, Homeland. Yes, I've heard great things about it. Homeland was almost called Better Call Saul. Ah. I swear to the soul of my father, Federico Montoya, I will find that terrorist. Is that a reference? I don't get it. I, wouldn't, I knew you wouldn't, Dorothy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Homeland almost called The, um, the Princess Cried. Yes. <laughs> because, of, because of Claire Danes? Yes. So I got it. Next up, um, Catherine Heigl's new vehicle, a helicopter, <laughs> State of Affairs. Yes. State of Affairs was almost called Shitty Homeland. <laughs> Shitty Homeland. God bless her. Would have been very um, accurate. And then we have, this is a hit, um, Game of Thrones. My wife and I were just in Sevilla, and we actually saw the Kingslayer, Jamie Lannister, or whoever plays that guy, I know he's not real, um, leaving the set. It was, pr it was pretty neat. It was us and a bunch of 14-year-old girls screaming at him. <laughs> um, Game of Thrones was almost called How I Met Her Dragons. <laughs> Makes perfect sense to me. Now, this next hit, I've never seen personally, NCIS Los Angeles. Um, NCIS Los Angeles was almost called LL Cool Justice. <laughs> I want to see that show. I want to see, I wanna see uh, LL Cool Justice going around. Rob, it's got Robin in it from um, Pratik's favorite movie, Batman and Robin. Yeah, I just want to go see LL Cool J just beating the snot out of people on a regular basis. That seems like a great show. Yeah. Um, now, Supernatural, one of these... One of these CW tween dramas. Yeah, long running. Not for me, as a man. <laughs> Supernatural was almost called Dawson's Creep. <laughs> um, this next one, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna preface this with um, literally and figuratively and all things being equal, my favorite program right now, as a man with cable. Um, Ancient Aliens. Ancient Aliens was almost called Modern Idiots. <laughs> Modern Idiots. Mm -hmm. Now this next one, um, it's, it's doing great in the ratings. It's killing in the ratings. Gotham. Uh, um, yes. The origin I'm, story of I'm Batman. An, yeah, well, uh, well, more of Gotham. But yes, uh, yes. Actually, if you ask me, there's too much Batman in it. Because I'm a nerd. <laughs> um, nerd with no friends right here. Um, so a nerd. So I'm sticking with Yeah, yeah. I'm st I got you. I'm sticking with this. even, And it's getting better. It gets better. That's, that's the message. I think Gotham started out shitty because it gets better. Yeah. Um, Gotham was almost called the DC. Like the, the very less, less sexy version of the OC. Yeah, like the OC. Gotcha. Because of that guy. Now they get it. Now they get it. Oh. What's his name? Ben, ben something or other. 
Ben Benjamin. Yeah. Ben Benjamin. That sounds. That sounds ben like Gingerman. a. That actually sounds like a Hollywood name. This fall, Ben Benjamin is <laughs> Commissioner Gordon <laughs> in the DC. <laughs> and then that one guy, the dad on the OC, has like, like um, you know, his superpower is his eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Gallagher three. <laughs> then we got uh, next up, Hogan Cleveland. TV Land just canceled this before I even got. Got a, got a chance to fall in love with it. Oh. Hodden Cleveland was almost called Golden Girls 2 Electric Boogaloo. Oh. And finally, Law and Order SVU Special Victims Unit was almost called The Cosby Show. Oh. Boom! Oh. And that's God. been almost called TV edition. Oh, see, I had, I knew you were going to do it. One day this. I want to be the one that starts the claps. Yeah. Okay. We're, the, the applause sign will come during, during the next season, I promise, Othi. All right. We're taking a we're taking a mid a, what's it called now a mid sum, a mid break a, a mid season break a mid seasons break. <laughs> um, my first guest tonight, good friend of the show, hilarious comic. Please give a warm welcome to the Bard of Lombard, <laughs> Pratik Trivastava. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Please use a coaster, Pratik. We went over this last time. <laughs> You're in the two timers club. Let me get rid of let me get rid of that. I'm a friend of the show now. You're a friend of the show. A lot of people get dubbed that, even though you know nobody wants that designation. <laughs> you sit back, sit back, relax. I don't want to sink in. Have yourself a time. No, if we. If you look at the footage for last time, I'm like down here. That was that was more your poor posture. I even thought of that, so I put I lifted this motherfucker. Oh, I put, you did. I put stilts on this thing, <laughs> for you. What am I, Hispanic or something? Like a lowrider or something? Is that what? Uh, the, this is not the time for. Not the time for that. Part. Not the time That's for. That's a levity. different talk show. It's a different talk show. <laughs> Um, how you been, Pratik? I'm doing well. I had a good Thanksgiving. Thank but you for asking. That was my first question. Thank you for asking. Hold on, let me ask again. <laughs> in my notes. There's nothing in here, by the way. How was your Thanksgiving? You are, you're just fake drinking. It's weird. I'm, I'm fake drinking. Are you it. drinking the coffee whiskey? I am co the coffee whiskey. It, it keeps me up at night and bitter in the evening. That's, that's how <laughs> that should work. <laughs> I'm just... You know what was weird? You, you wore that same. I believe if you look back on look back on the website ofishow.com, you'll see that Pratik wore the same T-shirt last time. The T-shirt is the same. That's, is, that like, is that your thing? Or are you just uh, when I'm a friend wear? of a show? I like to wear something. You gotta, <laughs> yeah. something old, something. How was old. your Thanksgiving? Sincerely. Yeah, we had a good Thanksgiving. We uh, we made a reverse gentrification turkey, which is. What, I, I, let me let me ask that. What, what is <laughs> reverse gentrification turkey? That was a great setup, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> it's basically it's like a it's an American turkey stuffed with Indian spices. So it's reverse. So what, the, well, oh. I'm I'm getting really into spices lately. Yeah. I'm doing I'm I'm probably out of all my out of um, well definitely out of my immediate family, my wife and I. <laughs> I'm probably that's pretty most, immediate. It's I'm probably like, the most new age adjacent, and I've heard a lot of stuff about turmeric lately. Turmeric, turmeric is, is good. Is turmeric one of the Indian uh, spices? Turmeric is a turmeric. Um, uh, cumin or cumin? Cumin. Cumin is a learning spice. Cumin, Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> um, turmeric, cumin. What else? And then just a secret mix. You know, you got. <laughs> What's this? It's mixed. It's, it's the. Uh, it's like you gotta. You know, you gotta trade some like how, beans or. How, how was it? <laughs> it was. It was good. It was actually. It's very good. It's not. It's. Uh, it's. It's a different mix. You, yeah. Do you have a big family? We do. We have a big family. We. Uh, like. Uh, oh, I, I, you know, not to not to like whip out our, our families right now, but like what? Seven inches. Wait. What? Like how many? Um, oh boy. How many cousins you got? Like how many first cousins do you have? First cousins. I have like I have like nineteen first cousins. I think. Okay. Wow. I probably have um, spread across two. You know, parents. Well, yeah. yeah like Isn't you that, do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Pretty um, sure that's how that works. Um, I probably have about that actually, um, I don't, but I only talk to half of them. Ah. You know, and only on Christmas Eve. So. Not Thanksgiving. You no. choose. You choose Christmas Eve. No, we're a, we're a stern Southern Indiana family. We just you know. That's how they do in the. Shake hands. In the I N. Is that the name of that show? The I, the I N. The I N. Yeah. Are you the Peter Gallagher of the, of the clan? Yeah, I have um, two furry caterpillars right here. <laughs> you made a puke joke. What? <laughs> Peter. That's Peter. Peter Pubiker. P Pubic, Peter Pubiker. Yeah. Peter Pubiker picked a peck of. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, anyway, we, we, we had some cousins. We got a lot of cousins. Yeah. Are you planning on having a big family? Are you going to continue the tradition? When are you going to marry a nice Indian girl, Pratik? What are you, my mom? <laughs> what are you doing there, Oti? She sent me questions. She's texting me right now. Ask him. She's probably actually, for real, she's listening right now. Right? Oh. Because this is a radio show, right? Huh? This is a radio show. It's a web show, right? She can yeah. listen to the audio, I guess. Oh. I don't know. I don't I'm, know. I'm assuming the webcast is showing video and audio. 
yeah. as opposed yeah. to usually yeah. like when, when things are going well. <laughs> things are going things yeah. are going well though right now. Now I understand after the last show you won the NBC Stand Up for Diversity this, competition. This is pretty crazy. Like so day that, after the show. Day after not even day not even twenty four hours. We we did the show. Remember last time I told you don't do this. Don't do it this. Makes, it I didn't learn that part. All right. And I'm and I'm pounding on this. Okay, so week. day after the show. Uh, not even day after the show. Like we we record at nights as people yeah. as people know who tune in. We record this ten p.m. at night. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a cattle call uh, at Jokes and Notes, which is on the south. For those who don't know, this is on the south side of Chicago. Uh, so maybe I got back home midnight. We had we had fun. There, there, there's a bit of an after party after this show. Like, Hills, yeah. We we party it up, uh, and I remember you telling me, "Oh, Patek, why can't you stay longer?" It's like, oh, I got to do this thing in the morning where I stand in line, like thinking nothing was gonna happen. Yeah. Go home. I sleep for a couple hours. Uh, then I take the green line all the way down to the south side. I get there. There's a hundred people around the corner, and they literally cut the list off at a hundred. So I was hundred and one out of a hundred. And they let you in. But they let me in. Uh, Were you in like a sad sack look? Like why why they let you in? I was in a half exhausted look. I think maybe they were just like this guy either is gonna like, pull a switchblade or something, or or maybe they you know they saw you. The producer saw you. And they're like, um, um, I know he's 101, but that guy was on the Oathy Schwearing show, show last night. Let him, let him in. Let him in. Let him in. He's wearing that so, Mario T-shirt. So what happened? How many rounds were there? This is a competition. There's like network executives looking at you. There there were some network executives. I mean, I don't want to get too much into those those boring details. We okay. Don't, we don't need to get into the tinsel. We don't need to talk about how I've tangled with Tinsel Town, as they say. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. We okay. Don't need, but yeah. yeah, there were a couple rounds, and then the sun the next day they did like a uh, a best of the festival. And you it's not much of a festival, it's just two days. And you were included in that? Yeah, so I performed in front of uh, like the best of Chicago's uh, sort of... There was It was basically 100 people, and they went down to five people, so I was the best of that showcase. Okay. And then they're going to let me know if they want me to go perform in uh, LA. And you won it all? I won it all. Name me, name, me, name me names. Name me three names of big wigs that I would think, oh, they were actually really good that you beat out. Name me three names that are, that are like, you know... Top, uh, cream of the crop. Jeff Dunham. I beat him. Jeff I, Dunham. I kicked his puppets to the curb. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, who else? Kicked him to the curb. Who else? Uh, Malcolm Jamal Warner. Not Bill Cosby, surprisingly enough, but Malcolm Jamal Warner was in line. He waited yeah. in line. Uh, his big thing was to yell, Rudy. Was, was Eddie with him? <laughs> Eddie Warner? <laughs> Pop Warner? No, no, Malcolm and Eddie. Oh, yeah. That Come was, on. You, I, I would have known if you would put that, you should have put that in your previous segment, the Malcolm and Eddie. Yeah. The, the almost called version didn't get past the censors. It was too, <laughs> too racial for the time. Do Two you and have a half. censors for this show? <laughs> um, and one part. Um, what, yeah. so, you, so you won it all. What did you get? Did you get a stipend? Did you get a development deal? Is there going to be a shitty sitcom name critique that where they. I would love. Strip, but they strip you of all your creativity. <laughs> Two, two and a half teaks. That's the <laughs> two and a half teaks. Two and a half teaks. <laughs> It'll be me, uh, somebody who kind of looks like me. What about Tiki Torch? Tiki Torch. Where you're like a funny, funny comedian that also is like a superhero that like can turn the. And he's got like a playhouse or something. And you, you're, you're voicing the chair. Wait, that's somebody else, I think. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what I'm saying is, would you like to be my I, sidekick? I would be awesome as a piece of furniture. Honestly, Othi, I think I think chair is the role you were born to play. I think you should do it. Like a talking chair. Yeah, like I have a catchphrase like, hey, sit on it. Sit on me. <laughs> this show isn't censored, right? No, um, not at all. That would be disgusting. Now, you also do among... among we do what, many things, actually. What, what did you get, though, really quick? What did you get out of it? Uh, what I got out of it was... This is, is the most coherent interview I've ever had, so I'm making progress. We're, 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 yes, what, we can. What, um, what, what did you get? Uh, basically, I get to go to LA and perform in front of agents, and when? this is gonna happen in February, actually. Nice. Yeah. So you're on you're on the move. I'm on the fast you're track. You're doing me a favor. Last time I was doing you a favor. This time you're doing me a favor. I'm, I'm blowing it up for you. You're popping. I'm popping. <laughs> That's a Pretty, two, you've been popping. Two people get that reference. You've been popping, dude. Um, so you've also done speaking of popping, you've also been we, a background extra. In, I've been a background extra. Is uh, that there, movies or television or this, both? It's been both, actually. I did I did a day on a on a secret independent movie that I can't really reveal who it, it, it's 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 Batman Superman actually. Okay. They're, they're shooting that, they're they're shooting that around actually where where we live right now. Like we live kind of close to Lawrence and Argo, right by the. Uh, this, this this is all very insidery information for your audience, but uh, you're giving away your cross streets. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I live by the. Uh, you you know where the Aragon Ballroom is, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a theater guy. I know where places are. It's actually a former boxing venue, also, if you didn't know. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay. Boxing. Hey, no, that's my man. So have you anything else? You told me to you told me to you know, AOP Byron Allen me a couple of hot ones about um, you. You are the Byron Allen of. I'm the white Byron Allen. <laughs> No, you, might even, you might even be more blacker than the Reverend Allen. My black coworkers say that I'm 2% black. 2% black. I don't know what that means. For black toast intolerance? Is that what black toast intolerance? I'm just <laughs> killing them. Killing them. All right, Pratik. Um, before, uh, before I ask you, the, before we get to the, the final round, this the little thing, round. really quick, because it's the holidays yeah. and Thanksgiving, you want it, you have a cousin here. So we have some, we have some family in town, and I always like, like you, you have family that doesn't know, or when they kind of find out that you do comedy, how does that, how does that play off of them? Do they, do they react well, or? I think they don't seek out that knowledge, or <laughs> they don't want to know that knowledge. Uh, I most of my I think cousins, it's a case of queerism. I don't know. Queerism. <laughs> It's comedy. It's a, how is that? I mean, that's just like a can. Is that Gary, Indiana? Is that, that how that works? No, this is. No. Tostito? Tostito. I'm from Tostito, Illinois, where folks know how to do You're think microwavable? <laughs> <laughs> but you want one of your. One of my cousins, cousins. Is, is a fan of my comedy, and just to show everybody family unity, I want him to come out and read one of my favorite jokes that I tell. So I'll be shake wherever you are. One of your jokes. Hey, cousin of mine, come read something that I created because I'm more important than everybody it, it's, else. All of this is to feed my ego, if What's you didn't it? already know. I'm, I am down with that. So this is I'm my cousin, uh, Abhishek. Abhishek. Yes. Could Abhishek. I just uh, come? Hey, let's come do on, it. Sit down, sir. Thank you. Look hey, down. Yeah, you're on film right now. <laughs> His wife is here also. She's very excited for this. I have a joke. He has a joke that... Are you a maternal cousin or a paternal cousin? I'm a paternal, paternal. cousin. Okay. Just want the audience to have a, you know... Yeah, some so I look a little like him. <laughs> you want the glasses? No, I'm good. <laughs> All right. Whenever so you're ready. An inch away this? from the mic. An inch away from the mic. All right. Yeah, as close as you can get. And, uh... I was at White Castle the other day, and they added a new item to the menu. The all-white meat premium chicken slider. I went ahead and tried the all-white meat premium chicken slider. <laughs> and it was the first time I had free range on organic diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Is that poop grass fed okay? Poop jokes, check. That empty, empty chair knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Thank you. I Byron, so I, I Byron Allen you. I gave you the right setup. And uh, <laughs> honestly, that is better delivery than I've seen in half the comics at some open mics. <laughs> you got a future, I'll be shake wherever you are. I hope he gets, more, you know, bigger than you. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll Jim Belushi me. <laughs> Yo, you just got Belushi. <laughs> All right, um, and now we're gonna finish up with this critique. Um, the Don't most worry. popular interview segment. <laughs> yes. Ever. I felt like there was an. Are you ready, Jim? Are we ready, Jim? Yes, are we you are. Ready, Jim? Oh, for the Inquisition. Oh. Oh. Ready? Oh, I'm going to ask you a series of sure, very up. important questions that could determine how your night goes. <laughs> it's like choose your own, choose your own adventure. Or demise. Oh, oh, or demise. This um, is all we're all going down. Pratik, if you could have any superpower, we have, we're out of time, so if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? I would like the power of invincibility. And why is that? I, I want to live forever. I want to see how I want to see how the end of the world is. You know, we weren't made humans were made to, to be born here, not to die here. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> what the S somebody's No caller ID. Come on. That's weird. Is that your cousin? I, I only ever call the Thai place, so I don't know why who's, who's calling me. Um, I throw my phone. We'll edit that out. Um, have you ever bit your toenails? Like bit them off? Or pre I I bit my toenails. Like in lieu of a clipper. T M I O T H Y. I don't think my f mouth can even reach my toes. Like, so no. So you've never been. No, I never. I never my toes. What's the wildest drug you've ever done? And your mom's listening right now. Uh oh. Uh, I think I've done. I think because you clearly don't remember the drugs that you do. I actually did. A, <laughs> I took. A, I took sponge cake, that was riddled with Adderall. And you didn't know it. I didn't know it. But were you like really focused on? I was super focused. I'm like, whoa, this cake is like, it's like that Space Jam juice. Like I felt like I could shoot free throws. 
I don't know. We made a um, reference to Space Jam. This is like, that might be the most like... And situation. finally, critique. I'll, I'll let you go. <laughs> Do you believe in a forever kind of love? Is there any other kind? Thank you. <laughs> oh, wait, there's one more. Oh. <laughs> Somebody said, oh. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Um, do you think that bastards are better than regulars? <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. We'll be right back with Elise Matrix. Yeah. We are, um, hey everybody, we're in my, uh, my kitchen now with a good friend of the show, Elise Mayfield from MasterChef Season 5. And um, also Honey Bakey, Honey Bakey, <laughs> 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 um, Honey Baby Bakery. Yes, Honey Baby Bakery. Um, new venture, your cat it's yeah, a catering thing, right? Doing some catering and, um, and bake good delivery. And um, yeah, it's been really fun and something new that I'm trying. and. Um, if anybody's interested, you can email me at honeybabybaker at gmail.com. Hold yep. for editing? <laughs> Hold for editing. Great. Okay. So uh, what are we making today? So today we're going to make stick, uh, well, see, I can't talk either. Today we're going to make sticky toffee pudding. Sticky toffee pudding. Which is a classic, uh, Christmas dessert. Okay. So. Or non-dom, non, -dom non, -dom non -dom <laughs> <laughs> Our time today. Non it can be non denominational too, right? It's true. Not necessarily a Christmas treat, a holiday treat, I All guess right. you should say. Um, so I decided to make this. Actually, this is an experiment because I have not made sticky toffee pudding before. So Me neither. So this is going to be new for everybody. Right. But this is a recipe that is on Gordon Ramsay's menu. Every single one of his restaurants has sticky toffee pudding on it. It is a very classic British dessert. So. Cool. Uh, so we've got our ingredients kind of set up, and um, the main thing about sticky toffee pudding it, that you might not know from the uh, from the title is that it's actually a date cake with toffee sauce. But the main ingredient and the thing that makes it so delicious are dates. Okay, this is the um, like the, these the date palm, right? <laughs> right. Now I've had many dates with my palm before. But hey, no! but it's like a giant raisin. Okay, it's delicious. Delicious. Should I eat one? Yeah. They're no, great. No, do I need to rinse it? These are no, no, organic. No, no. no, they're fine. Watch out for the pit in the middle. Are you scared? And they're so good. It's like a healthy milk dud. <sighs> okay, see? The, the, <laughs> it's like a healthy milk dud. Fair enough. You don't yeah. have to eat the whole thing, but I think they're really good. They're right. a good treat. So what I've done is de-pitted um, two and a fourth cups of, uh, of dates, or three, uh, three quarters of a pound of dates. Okay. Deep pitted them. They have been resting in boiling water and, um, a teaspoon and a half of baking soda now, for 30 that, minutes. What does that do? It's, help. it's helping to rehydrate and soften them up. So okay. once we blend them up, we're basically going to have a date puree. We're going to blend them up with Whoa. the immersion blender. Don't be scared. No, they, taste, they taste it good. They taste it good. But like, to me, where I'm from, Indiana, right? Southern Indiana. <laughs> The um the orange was kind of exotic, right? Right. Like so, dates are we were, a little. We were an apple and banana people. Right. Oranges and juice for it, but you know. Watch you show, out, dates going. You show me a kiwi, I'm gonna I'm gonna like lock my doors. You know. <laughs> don't be scared of the date. It's delicious. I'm sure this looks super appetizing, but don't worry, it will look better. I also really like this. The reason, the other reason I wanted to make this was because I am a big fan of warm desserts. Like my favorite is to eat a cookie right out of the oven, or okay. not wait for the cake to cool all the way. And sticky toffee pudding is really good when it's served warm. So that means we won't have to wait for anything to cool. Have you ever used one of these? No. Do you want? You want to go for it? Yeah, all okay. you have to do is press that button. All right. That reminds me of trying to unclog the toilet at work. <laughs> expecting some splatter. Can we splatter, Jim? No, don't do that. Please don't. <laughs> this isn't even the right. camera. So we're almost done with this. I know it doesn't look very pretty, but if we're going to make little cakes and it's going to be beautiful. Right, the yeah. next step is, the next step is to add 
the butter to the sugar, which I'm going to let you do. The butter Just to the sugar. The and this is unsalted butter, right? Right. Unsalted butter. Three fourths cup of white sugar and two tablespoons of brown sugar. So I'm going to let you keep stirring that. Mm -hmm. So once you've got that all stirred in, the next thing you'll want to do is add in the two eggs that are next to you that I've already whipped. I've already beat them up a little Grade bit. Grade A large. Grade A large eggs. Well, you wouldn't have them any other way. That's right. <laughs> um, this fruit mixture, the dates are really going to make a huge difference in what the texture of the cake is. So I don't think that, that this one is one that's really going to... You hear about Sheila? How, lo how lovingly you're holding a bowl. You hear about Sheila? <laughs> no, I hadn't heard about Sheila. Um, okay, so the final step is we're going to add, um, how many grips of flour is this? One and two thirds, I know, right? Here it is. <laughs> One and two thirds cup of flour. We've What's also got, um, well, I also added my secret ingredient. There's also salt in here. Is that for the that's proprietary to Honey Baby Bakes? Yeah, well, kind of. Okay. But I'll show you what it is. My secret ingredient is called baking spice, <laughs> and it's from Penzi Spice Shop. It is a blend of all delicious things. It's cinnamon, cassia, um, allspice, mace, and cardamom. Cardamom, yes! It That's smells so delicious. It's, this is, it smells so good. Yeah, it's like a it's like a classier pumpkin spice. It know? is. That's totally what it is. Okay. I'm also gonna add. Oh. Now, watch out! We're gonna add all the dates before, in and mix before it's that. fully incorporated. That's all right. Is Honey Baby Bakery fully incorporated yet? No, not yet. LLC. I, we're working on it. We're working on it. I'm talking to my dad, who's an accountant. He's going to make it happen. All right. So we stir, stir, stir. That's our cake batter. Yes. Yeah, we're going to, so we're going to make toffee sauce as soon as we get done with this. Toffee sauce uh, is, instead of using granulated sugar, toffee sauce uses uh, brown sugar. Okay. Which won't burn as easily because, uh, now, Actually, this is a good question. Do you know what brown sugar is? Why it's brown sugar? Isn't it molasses and sugar? Boom! Bam! You got it. That is exactly what brown sugar is. It's regular sugar and molasses. So if you ever are in a pinch I, and you can't find brown sugar, you happen to have some molasses in the house, you can make your own brown sugar. Not that difficult. So it doesn't, but it doesn't burn as easily because it's got that molasses in it, which is great. And um, it also is delicious. So it's really, it's a very similar process to making caramel without the worry of okay. burning the sugar. It's great. So we're almost done. I don't know if you're interested in eating any of this batter, but it's really So it's okay? Good. It's I mean, really there, good. Isn't there a raw egg in there? Who, it, raw. It's raw! No, 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 no. It's raw, Elise! No. Everyone needs to calm down about raw eggs. Let me tell you something. People eat raw eggs all the time and they are fine. So we've got almost two pans full of toffee, toffee cakes. So we're going to pop them in the oven, which has been preheated to 350. And they're going to bake for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. So in the meantime, we're going to make the toffee sauce while these are in the oven. So now we're making the toffee sauce for this. And like with the cakes, we're also using melted butter. Okay. So we're still using another. We're using one stick of unmelted or <laughs> one stick of unsalted melted okay. butter. And now all we're going to do is add. Terrible at math, but following recipes a lot. Um, okay. I'm pretty great at fractions now. Um, so let's see. So this is one cup plus two tablespoons of brown sugar. And you may notice that this seems like an awfully big pot. But what's going to happen is that after this has melted, we're going to add the cream. And the cream is going to cause this to bubble up really, really tall. So we want to make sure that there's plenty of room for that to go. So I would say when you're making toffee sauce, make sure that you're using a pretty large pot um, because you, you don't want you don't want it to boil over and lose all your hard work. I don't know where that falls with the heavy cream. This is oh, Worcestershire sauce. Not uh, this is vanilla. I'm okay. the, not Worcestershire. It's vanilla going in. That's about two. Oh, Worcestershire sauce. Mm, two teaspoons of Worcestershire. JK, it's vanilla. They call me Vanilla Shamar at work. Do they? Yeah. Well, I call me that. <laughs> okay. Because I feel like I'm like the white Shamar Moore. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Great, so we're kind of waiting on this to come up to a bubble now. Before we add the cream. Right, so I want I want this to go ahead and start melting down and dissolve some of that sugar. And we're, we're already starting to bubble up, which is great. I'm ready. Great, right. <laughs> you're ready. Oh good, well go ahead. <laughs> great, okay, so the date cakes are out of the oven. They nice. took 30 minutes to bake. JK on the 15 to 20, they took 30 minutes to bake. All right. Um, so they're going to be this, they're a very nice dark brown color. What do you think the different was it? I know ovens vary. Was I think it ovens vary. I it's also winter just time. think, I, you know, I think my ingredients might have been a little cool, so it might have taken a little bit longer, which is fine. Are you supposed to preheat your ingredients? No, but a lot, of, a lot of times for baking, things should be at room temp, and my eggs were not at room temp, so oh, sometimes that see. can affect the, the bake. I'm time. worried about eating raw eggs and refrigerating <laughs> my nope. eggs. I don't nope. know how to work with eggs, okay? <laughs> All right, so now Is it that, the altitude? Is it? <laughs> definitely not I'm, the altitude. Because I'm a little high. <laughs> hey, um, okay. So the date cakes are out of the oven. If you, uh, here. You can, feel, you can feel how heavy that is. Like it's heavier than a it's normal dense. cupcake. Yeah. Know? It is dense. I can relate. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, for the, and our toffee sauce is also done, and that's been cooling in its own ramekin. So, kind of a, just the final touch Shh, for some garnish. It's cooling. It's cooling. Um, so, the final thing, we're actually going to make unsweetened whipped cream, which might sound a little weird, but because we have the sugar in the toffee and the sugar in the date cake, I do have vanilla simple syrup. Oh, you do have vanilla simple syrup. Which is the ingredient in Starbucks whipped cream. What? But we don't need it. But so we're gonna do we're gonna do a little unsweetened, um, and that'll give us a little bit of. There's already going. sweetness in the thing. Right. So there's already sweetness in the toffee sauce. Okay, I'll be an agent of shield. Uh, agent of shield. <laughs> so this will take a little bit. We're just whipping up some some heavy cream. And then we're we'll, we'll gonna do a little plating after this. So for these, I've got two ramekins out. We're, we're gonna plating pass in the ramekin. The, yeah, so we're gonna plate in. We're ramekin. ramekining it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna I take. Got plates. Each, oh, we can do the plates. Do we like a ramekin? I like ramekins. Let's actually. I kind of like ramekins, but. All right, without, let's do the ramekins. Do you like ramekins? I have red holiday. Pl I have plates. We can plate. We have holiday plates. Yeah, we have plates. Plates on plates on plates. The whipped cream, unsweetened whipped cream, is just a matter of whipping the cream to incorporate air into it. Right. Okay. That's oh, it. Well. Almost too simple. That's it. Okay. Okay. So I've been fascinated with ramekins. Oh, yeah. Ever since I like you, know, my first you know restaurant I went to where they put that ketchup in there, it really oh, yeah, it really, really oh, elevates ketchup fancy. when you put it in a ramekin. Wait, that's, is that a French cooking thing, right? Ramekins? Or yeah, the... well, yeah, I, I guess they they are. I mean, you can use ramekins for, for anything because they're heat proof. You can do a lot of things with, you can use them for serving dishes. Miniature can... chicken pot pies. Exactly. Yeah, so they're great because you can make, I mean, um, uh, what do you call it? Not flan, but... Flan. No, <laughs> flan. <laughs> with the burnt sugar on top. Uh, it's my mother's favorite. Burn story. some sugar on me. Creme brulee. I'm a ramekin. Creme brulee. Creme brulee. They bake in ram in ramekins. Okay. That's, that's what you get your I've, I've truly in. been fascinated with ramekins ever since I found out they were they yeah. existed. Well, they're delicious and are delicious. You put delicious things in them. I wouldn't recommend eating them. All right. So now we're going to plate because we're, we're pretty much done. So I am going to take a date cake. I'm gonna first. I'm gonna spoon a little bit of toffee sauce into the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Nice little portion there, right? I have a ramekin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is you don't get shy with the toffee sauce because it's called sticky toffee pudding. For it's just toffee. It's just toffee. I'm gonna split this cake in half. Laterally. So you can also see what the inside looks like. Awesomeness. Then we're gonna put more toffee sauce in the middle. Ooh. Then we're gonna put the top on. I bet you can guess what happens next. More toffee More sauce. More toffee sauce. More toffee sauce. Okay. And then finally to top it off is some of the unsweetened whipped cream. It looks delish. Just a little, a little dollop. And because of that sauce is still warm, it's going to melt just a little bit. Cool. You put your fingers in it. I sure did.
Alright. Okay, so take a bite. Mm. Yeah? It's, um, it is like, like a, mm. a sweet and salty, sweet and mm -hmm. savory thing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. pretty good. That's pretty, that's pretty darn good. Um, thank you so much for joining us again. Thanks for so having so good. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're keeping Jim out of this. This is so good, Jim. You know what would probably be good with this? Some of your coffee and whiskey. Oh, these night coffee? What? This is um whiskey infused with coffee. Great. Right? Coffee infused with whiskey. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to shoot this, but I'm going to try. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Here's the cooking and shooting. Woo! Ha! We did it! Woo! Nice. This is so good. Jimmy, you gotta get on. Yeah, get seriously, on we're gonna make you one now. Oh. Hold on, let's a bigger ring. This is really, really good. Thank you. Alright, you can see him at Snack Attack, December 15th, 8 p.m. at the Elvor Room in Chicago, Illinois. For more information, go to facebook.com slash snackattackchai. Please give it up for Pratik Stravastava. You guys enjoy your desserts? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't want to make anybody choke, so let's see how this goes. I got my dessert right here. Like, I'm tempted to just eat it during the set. But I'm going to wait for it. I'm going to wait for it, guys. Uh, everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Good yeah, Thanksgiving? Yeah. It's good. You get to spend time with family and friends. Like, uh, this year, I had a fun Thanksgiving. Actually, last Thanksgiving, I had to do a show. This is all real, by the way. None of these, none of these comedian fibs that you hear once in a while. <laughs> this really happened. I spent Thanksgiving in Waukegan, Illinois. All right. I don't want to knock Waukegan. Any Waukegan people here? All right, let's fuck with Waukegan. <laughs> this is what happened. I spent Waukegan. I had a show, like, Thanksgiving night. I had a show, and you know what? Like, see, this is a nice setup. I know it's a living room, but you know what? This is welcoming. This is friendly. Waukegan wasn't very friendly, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minutes of me walking into the bar in Waukegan. A bartender looked at me and said, Hey, where'd you park your camel, buddy? That really happened. It really happened. And I should have seen it coming. I should have seen it coming because that bartender was wearing a hot sauce themed Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you didn't know, is a mark of a racist douchebag. <laughs> Like, when he said that, where'd you park your camel, buddy? Where'd you park your camel, buddy? I felt like I died and went to live inside a Jeff Dunham joke. <laughs> That's two takedowns of Jeff Dunham in the same show. <laughs> Braver men than me have failed. Uh, but it's good to be here. I, lo I love coming to this show. I'm, I'm, I'm a friend of the show. We did it <laughs> been here a couple times. Because they say my name correctly here. As it was announced correctly, my name is Prathik Sarvastva. Very traditional Indian name given to me by my traditional Indian parents, Nick and Sheila. I don't <laughs> What happened there? That's, again, not a lie. None of, these, none of these comedian lies. I'm all about that truth, you guys. I'm all about that truth, all that truth, all that truth. That's a pop culture reference for you guys. I've gotta get in on them pop culture references. I feel like whenever I have a good joke, like somebody should just feed me a little bit of that cake, like a Pavlovian thing. We're not doing that, though. Uh, yeah, so my parents' names are Nick and Sheila, and I asked my father what Prathik means in English. This is what he told me, and this changed my fucking life, you guys. He told me that Prathik, in English, translates to symbol of a singular life. Wow. Symbol of a singular life. Symbol of just one life. If you think about it, that means that my name translates to YOLO. <laughs> You only live once, that's me. Like people jump out of planes and yell, you only live once, bro, and I am their king now. <laughs> me, Prathik, I'm an adrenaline drunkie. I grab life by the balls, you guys. Like seriously, for real, you guys. I grab life by the balls. My heart's racing for the dumbest of reasons. Like really, my heart starts racing. Like when, first off, my heart starts racing when I give an expired coupon at Quiznos, which is the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> 
My heart also starts racing when I'm filling out one of those BuzzFeed quizzes. Like, yeah, what Disney villain are you? I really want to score Jafar from Aladdin on those quizzes. <laughs> but I keep scoring Ursula from Little Mermaid. I'm not octopus, you guys. I'm a grown man. Sometimes being a grown man, you got to date the ladies. See how I segued there? That is some top-notch segue. You can't learn that type of segueing at Second City stand-up class, you guys. Only, only from me. I took down Jeff Dunham in Second City. I'm just, I'm killing it, you guys. Killing it. Yeah, so like, you know, I, I, here's the thing with dating now. There's, you, can, you can go on them online, do the online dating. Or you can read old school Cosmo articles. <laughs> I read some old school Cosmo articles. I read this one. It said that men are attracted to women that remind them of their mother. <laughs> Woohoo, that's kind of a <laughs> fucked up statement, right, guys? Attracted to a woman that reminds them of their mother. Like, what? I don't, I, some people, nobody, no one should agree with that. <laughs> but I agree with that statement. <laughs> Because my mom used to be a depressed white girl that works at a cupcake store. <laughs> I'm one of the lucky ones, you guys. But uh, I did try some online dating. Uh, I tried downloading Tinder. Are we all familiar with Tinder here? Yeah, yeah. It's mostly married people on the side of the room, but, <laughs> but are we fam we're familiar with Tinder. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Mixing it up. I like that. That is called wedding progress, you guys. The future of marriage. So I, I, you know, I, I, I tried downloading Tinder. I tried downloading Tinder, but instead I downloaded Tinder. From when you want to hook up with soft deli meat on Tender, I swiped right on some hot, juicy steak, thinking I'm going to hook up with some hot steak. I go in, it's just a piece of catfish, you guys. So I got catfish by some actual catfish. And again, guys, you can't learn that type of wordplay at Second City Stand-Up Class. But I will teach you that type of wordplay. That empty chair knows what I'm talking about. Right there. That is my fan. The empty chairs. Where are my empty chairs at? Right there. Right at that empty chair. Oh, I like that. The camera moved. I like that. Camera one, camera two. There's a camera in the beer bottle. There's a camera in that menorah, I think. I don't know. Hava Nagila, I think. That's, that's what you said. I like that. You got the, the tree and the menorah. They're not fighting with each other. They're like, they're definitely in like a standoff of some kind, but they love each other. Because you got you got to tolerate people, you guys. You got to look for that silver lining. These are dark times right now. You got to look for that silver lining in life, even in acts of racism. Like sometimes racism will punch me in the gut, but you got to look for that silver lining. So I'm going to give you a couple examples here. This is the bulk of the set. It's going to happen. I went to uh, DePaul University. Regional reference. You guys know what I'm talking about. Woo! Yeah, none of you went to DePaul. I love that. <laughs> Uh, so I went to DePaul. I had this, it, and if, for those of you that don't know, DePaul University, it's a Catholic school. And if you can tell by all of this, I'm not much of a Catholic. But my roommate was very Catholic. We'd go, like, every day, he'd always try to throw in a little Catholic jab. Uh, we'd go back and forth every day, like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, the religious edition. <laughs> Just back and forth, we butted heads. And I remember it was winter, end of uh, first semester, we're going to winter break. I see a Christmas present on my desk. I'm like, oh, this is nice, right? I open up the Christmas present, copy of the King James Version of the Bible, <laughs> with no card, just a post-it <laughs> note. Post-it note slapped on the Bible. It says, Pratik, you're gonna need this Bible more than I do. <laughs> Whoa. You know, drop everything, you guys. I know those desserts are very interesting, but drop them for a second. <laughs> this is shocking. Like, that's kind of racist, right? Like, he's assuming that I need the Bible for my life. I know he spelled my name correctly on the post-it note, but that's the last thing on my mind right now. I was offended by that. Don't tell me what Bible to read. Don't tell me what book to read ever. But I look for the silver lining, you guys. I look for that silver lining. So I cut a hole in the Bible and I stored my weed in it. That's what happened. <laughs> and I didn't even smoke weed. I picked up a new habit <laughs> to fight religious bigotry. <laughs> That's what you do. Like I said, guys, racism comes out of nowhere. Sometimes you don't know where it's coming. Like recently, I was in an Uber using. The, by the way, if you didn't know, o Othi was the one who threw me onto Uber. So, so thank you for that, Othi. <laughs> Do they sponsor this? They don't, they don't sponsor it. Uber's not up on that. They should be, though. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm helping you out, although this story might not. This might, this might turn you off to Uber, actually, because the driver 
one time, and don't worry, I gave him a horrible review on Uber, but he asked me uh, right before the end of the ride, we're getting to the, we're pulling up, he told me, uh, so are you gonna tip me? Whoa. I said, wait, why? Why are you asking? He's like, every Indian customer I ever had has never tipped me. <laughs> that's very an aggressive line of questioning. And that's when I realized the tipping stereotype has been passed down. Like, the tipping stereotype has been with every single minority. Like, clap your hands if you've been accused of not tipping. Like, has that ever happened? So what do you, what do, you do? Yeah. Don't throw money. Don't make it rain. Just, just clap your hands. Like, what do you do in that situation? Like, if someone accused me of not tipping, I would just, like, throw money down, and then the stereotype's over. It's one of the few times you can bribe yourself out of bigotry. One of the few times. But, I, but like I said, he shouldn't have asked me that. It's like, it's poor customer service. He was being kind of an asshole. So I got a real Sophie's Choice on my hands. <laughs> what do I do? Do I, because if I don't tip this guy, who he, and by the way, he was a white cab driver, the Jackie Robinson of cab drivers, if you didn't know. <laughs> He's gonna run all his white friends and say, this guy Pratik, he, uh, he was on the OT Shrang show. He's a pretty good dude, but he doesn't tip. All these new people, they don't tip. <laughs> I don't want to add fuel to the stereotype that just existed. Like, I don't want to do that. So here's what I did. I tipped him, but then I slashed all four of his tires. <laughs> and if you're wondering, Pratik, now what if he runs to all his little friends and says, oh, all Indian people, they will tip well, but then slash tires. <laughs> you know what? That's a pretty baller stereotype. <laughs> That's a stereotype I can get behind because as John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what your racial stereotypes can do for you. Ask what you can do to make your racial stereotypes way fucking cooler. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how that quote should go. <laughs> that's what you do sometimes. Like sometimes racism like comes out of nowhere and like, you know, you know there's gonna be a racial war at the end of this year, so we gotta prepare for that racial war. People are always tell me, Pratik, how should we prepare for this racial war? What should we do? What should we do? Here's what you do. We gotta make the racial slur playing field even keel. We gotta make it on par. Because there is a group of people that, ha that they, they have racial slurs, but they are not A-plus like, racial slurs. I'm talking, of course, about white people. <laughs> what are the racial slurs for white people? Cracker. Cracker. Honky. Honky. I love that. The non-white the non guy said that. I love that. Like, Ofe. See, like, Ofe. Ofe is a racial slur. Ofe swearing. I didn't <laughs> Again, you can't learn that type of wordplay at the Second City. Uh, Ofe. You know what? You know the first time I heard Ofe on the Jeffersons, and there was a laugh track followed by that. That cannot be a racial slur. That is the rotary phone of racial slurs. You need the iPhone of racial slurs so you can arm yourself for that racial war that's happening at the end of the year. This is tolerant. This is like... This is like racial unity stuff, you guys. Like, I'm all about that racial unity. All about that racial unity, you guys. <laughs> How are you all about that racial unity, Pratik? This sounds kind of racist. Don't worry, don't worry. I'm going to get to it. But I'm all about that racial unity because when I go to Pop Bellies, I order the MLK. What's the MLK? The MLK is one slice of white bread, one slice of brown wheat, nothing else in between. <laughs> the MLK, just like racial harmony, it's kind of dry and sometimes a little tough for people to swallow sometimes. <laughs> a little tough. But back to that racial slur. What is a word that hurts white people more than any other word? Well, I stumbled upon this word in Waukegan, Illinois, <laughs> of all places. I stumbled upon it. It was that hot sauce themed Hawaiian shirt guy. I, uh, I remember he called, remember, remember when I, uh, remember that thing he said earlier when he said, I, uh, where did I park my camel? I remember I went on stage and I said, give it up for your racist bartender in the back. And he looked at me and said, hey, don't call me a racist. That's when I realized that is the greatest racial slur for a white person. You call a white person a racist, it's like, how dare you, sir? I voted for Obama, damn it. I DVR'd blackish. I retweeted that one article about the black of black people on SNL. I owned every season of The Wire. I can't be a racist. But here's what you do. 
Here's what you do, Othi Shrang. Here's what you do, Othi Shrang. I said Othi, I didn't say Othi. That's, that's for later. And for all your fans listening, who, if they're white, black, whatever they are, own up to the word racist. Call yourselves racist. Like, I want to see young white kids on the playground be like, hey, I'm open, pass me the rock, my racist, pass me the rock. <laughs> and by the way, I am saying racist. I am dropping that hard T. <laughs> because that's way cooler to say. So, I just, I want to hear why you can say that. Like, I would love, my dream, because I have a dream, as they, as they say. My dream is for, like, white, let's say, like, a white guy's got a job at Dairy Queen, and all his white friends are like, hey, hook a racist up with some free Dairy Queen, man. <laughs> racist, please. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, it's, it's food for thought. Because what do we take away from life? Like, you know what? Like, we take away, there's a lot of things that divide us up. But what will unite us? Racist pieces. Racist pieces, that <laughs> chocolate, that will unite us. You know what else will unite us? Awkward situations, misunderstandings. That will unite us all day, every day. Hashtag you only pratheek once. It's a callback to a joke I did earlier. <laughs> what will unite us is awkward situations and misunderstandings. And that is most of my life. Like, uh, it was Black Friday today. A lot of people did shopping. Uh, if you didn't do shopping, you're fucking communist. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a couple years ago, this was, this was not on Black Friday, but uh, I was at Yorktown Mall. Regional reference, that empty chair knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> that menorah really knows what I'm talking about. But uh, I was at Yorktown Mall, and uh, Yorktown Mall, what they'll do sometimes is they will set up free sample tables where people can go and peruse free samples. So I was walking around one day, and uh, this was at the time of SARS. You gotta remember that epidemic, SARS? Oh, yes. I did not have my handy mask with me, and somebody coughed out. So I freaked the fuck out, you guys. I was freaking out. I was like, what's going on? What do I do? I look in my back pocket, thinking I got my trusty little Purell. The Purell is the, the lightsaber to my Jedi, if you guys didn't know that. <laughs> I did not have the Purell on me. So I freaked out. I'm like, oh, what do I do? So I start walking around a little bit. As luck would have it, the Othi Schwering Show at Othi.com, <laughs> there was a table in Yorktown Mall with clear little plastic bottles on it. I get excited thinking, yes, I'm gonna get some free hand sanitizer. I walk up to the table like so, but there is a sign on this table. And we've all seen this sign before on all free sample tables. It says, take one free sample, please. Look, guys, I'm a two-time guest on the Othi Shrang show. <laughs> I'm not gonna take just one. I took five free samples, please. I just snuck them and put them in my back pocket like so, and I start to walk away. The store clerk, who was a lady, she caught me, though. She said, hey, what are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? I look at her, and I say, uh, well, you can never get enough of these, right? And I give her a weird wink, right? <laughs> she gets a confused look on her face, and she walks away. But she doesn't call security. Nothing happens, I get off scot-free. So I'm thinking, all right, it's a pretty good day. I walk around and I hear another cough. I freak out, I'm like, all right, I gotta got sanitize these hands. So I put out one of the bottles and I start rubbing my hands. It doesn't feel like hand sanitizer, you guys. <laughs> it feels like something else. I pull out the bottle very carefully and I look at the label like so. It says Astro Glide Sex Lube. <laughs> Let that marinate for a second, Othi Schwering Show. <laughs> I have stolen samples of sex lube. Apparently, they give out samples of sex lube. Most people who use lube, they know what they're going to get. This guy over there knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> you don't need to sample lube. But I stole the lube. That's part one on me. Part two, I told the female store clerk, you can never get enough lube. <laughs> That's what a sexual deviant would say. <laughs> and I winked at her. <laughs> That's what a sexual deviant would do. Like, they should have slapped the cuffs on me and take me away, but I'll just slide right out of the cuffs. <laughs> so my hands are slick. All right, I've been with you guys. Hold the drink. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, come on, give it up. Oh, we're doing SNL ending now. Thank yes, you guys no so ending. much for coming out to the show. Give it up for my beautiful wife, Jana. Jana. Woo!
Jim doing the tech. Jim. All you guys are making live comedy a reality. Um, we'll be back. We'll see you next year, probably. Okay. Next year. Right. Goodbye. Everybody come out. Look, mill about. Mill about. Mill about. It's mill about. Mill about. To the summer. On tonight's broadcast of the Oathy Schwering Show, you heard music from 650 North, U.S. Army Blues, and Mad Fleets. I'd like to thank all the guests who appeared on the Oathy Schwering Show this year, everybody who came to see us live. The show has taken the December off to spend time with our family for the holidays. We'll be back with live broadcasts in January. Thank you so much for watching. Good night, Milwaukee, wherever you are. Oinshow.com. <laughs>